Hi, and welcome to Kidney Plugged In. It's June, and Canadian Environment Week is here. And in honor of Environment Week, the BC Newcom branch is rolling out a new recycling initiative called Kidney Cans. Through Kidney Cans, you can be a kidney hero in minutes when you express your support for kidney patients by donating your recyclable cans and bottles at all Return It Express locations. And we visit our kidney car partner, Schnitzer Steel's Recycling Center in Surrey, to get an up-close and personal look at the eco-friendly recycling process for vehicles that are donated to the kidney car program. Learn how the Kidney Foundation can turn your unwanted vehicle into a life-saving machine. And we share highlights from nephrologist Dr. Mike Bevilacqua's presentation at a recent forum on advancing PKD care in 2021. So stay with us because all of this and more is coming up in a jam-packed episode next right here on Kidney Plugged In. Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Andrews and I'm here to introduce to you a new community initiative from the Kidney Foundation BC and Yukon branch and NCORP's Return Express. It's called Kidney Cans. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been a volunteer with the Kidney Foundation of Canada for longer than I can remember now. I'm a national director and I'm also the national secretary with the Kidney Foundation. I happen to be a living donor. I've given a kidney to my daughter, Tara, thus my interest in the Kidney Foundation. I'm the founder of a busy family real estate team called Andrews Group Real Estate. I'm a wife. I have lots of great friends, but I'm most proud of my three children. And my three kids have given me the best gift of all, which is my six gorgeous grandkids. And they call me Nana. I imagine it's the same for you, but my family is the center of my being, and their well-being is at the core of this incredibly simple initiative by the Kidney Foundation and Encore Pacific. And I'm super proud to tell you about it. We all know that recycling is a fundamental part of how we can care for our environment. Recycling our bottles, cans, and beverage packages is one of the simplest ways we, you and me, can make a difference each day and help reduce all the unnecessary waste in our landfills. Now here's the really awesome part. Through the Kidney Cans Initiative, you get the opportunity to donate to a really worthy cause and save the environment at the same time and our children's futures. How awesome is that? Look, we all want to do our part, right? But this program makes it easy for you to be a hero three different ways. One, you're helping the planet. Two, you're donating to the Kidney Foundation, BC Yukon branch. And three, you're just being a great person by giving back. And we all need to do that, right? All of this with no financial cost to you. It's like giving without taking. Just a little organizing of the recyclables, which you're probably already doing anyway, aren't you? So, how does kidney cans work? Well, it's really easy. It's really just four simple steps. And they're all laid out for you here in the starter kit that the Kidney Foundation will send you. So what exactly is in here anyway? Well, let's have a look. First, we have a welcome letter from the Kidney Foundation, which kind of explains the whole thing. It's pretty simple. There's two marketing pieces, a buck slip and a poster. And these will help to remind you to save your kidney cans, but they'll also help you to remember to do your recycling and you can share them with your friends. There are two recycle bags. They're nice, big, clear plastic bags for you to put your recycling materials in. This is the key piece. These tags are what goes on the bags. And so that when they get to the Recycle Express kiosk, you just put this on and away they go and the money goes to the Kidney Foundation. There's also information on doing a bottle drive. And what a great idea is that. Just think about getting your friends involved. Maybe you could do a mini bottle drive. Maybe you could do a huge bottle drive. There's so many ways that you can help the Kidney Foundation and help this recycle program. And here's some more great ideas. If you own a business, how about starting a recycling program at work? Or maybe you own a restaurant or you work in a restaurant. Imagine collecting all those recyclables for the Kidney Foundation's initiative program. That would be amazing. And maybe you live in a condo and you have a recycling room. Just imagine getting all those recyclables donated to the Kidney Foundation. That would make you a superhero. There are four 
easy steps to becoming a kidney cans hero. The first one is, of course, you just collect all of your returnables. Then place them in the clear plastic recycle bag. I've got one here to show you. You just put them all in there. Once you've collected the bag and it's full, you just put one of the tags that have been sent in your starter kit, and we can get you more, apply it to the bag. Next, you just take your bag of returnables to the closest Return It Express Depot and just drop it off. If you need to print more tags, all you need is the kidney cans account number, which is 543-639-2267. But that's too complicated, you might think. Someone really smart at the Kidney Foundation has cleverly matched the numbers to spell kidney cans. So if you can remember kidney cans, then you can spell it out on the dial pad at the Express Kiosk and print more tags you can keep for the future. So just print your tags, tag your bags, and leave them in the designated area. Return Express does all the nasty work. They will count them and sort them and refund the money to the Kidney Foundation. Wow, it's amazing how easy it is. That's why we're excited. Are you excited too? Are you feeling it? There are Return Express locations across BC, so make sure to check out the location in your community. It's easy to be a community hero when you express your support for the Kidney Foundation BC Yukon branch. Ha ha, get it? Express at the Return It Express location near you. Hopefully you're anxious to get started. To get your starter kit, contact Brenda Dondo at the Kidney Foundation. Her email is brenda.dondo at kidney.ca. Thank you for donating your recyclable cans and bottles to support kidney patients via critical programs, services, and research. If you do, you're totally a hero. For sure, you're my hero. And you know what? There are a lot of very deserving kidney patients that would like to thank you too. Remember, it's the little things we do each day that make us the people we are. I'm committed to this, how about you? Will you help us? Let's see, so kidney is a these are my grandpa's kidney stones. They're very precious. Kidney is a bone in your back that helps you turn. <laughs> mm, I don't know, to be honest. They don't know kidneys are vital, do you? Get the facts at kidney.ca. Hi, I'm Marv, and welcome to Did You Know? Did you know that Canadian Environment Week is June 2nd to June 9th this year? Canadian Environment Week includes important dates such as World Environment Day on June 5th, Clean Air Day on June 2nd, and World Oceans Day on June 8th. And in honor of Environment Week, we're here to give you a few reminder tips of ways that we can all be a little more eco-friendly. Like transportation, did you know that idling your vehicle not only wastes gasoline, but it causes pollution and can even damage your vehicle, let alone the environment. And we all know that traffic can be a big headache. So whenever possible, consider walking, biking, or transit instead of driving. Or why not share a ride to work with coworkers? That will help you save money and help the environment at the same time. And other ways to help the environment are to reduce waste, reuse items, and of course, recycle. And when you think about it, you can help the environment just by using the proper recycling bin. So remember to keep that used soda can or any other recyclable products out of the garbage and into the recycling bin. And use paper wisely too, because we can save the number of trees being cut down just by using less paper. And did you know one of the best ways to be eco-friendly lifestyle is to recycle your old car. And you can do this easily through the Kidney Foundation's Kidney Car Program. Kidney Car is a unique recycling program that benefits the environment, vehicle owners, and people who are affected by kidney disease. If you or your business have unwanted vehicles, consider the benefits of donating to Kidney Car. When you donate, you receive 
a free vehicle towing, a minimum $300 tax receipt, and that warm and fuzzy feeling that you've helped Kidney Foundation reduce the burden of kidney disease. So in honor of Canadian Environment Week, do something today and every day. It can be big or small. It will all add up to help protect the environment. For more environmental tips, check out envirotips.html. And now you know. Hey, honey, I lost the list for Jason's birthday thing. Obviously, hamburger cakes. <laughs> no, not hamburger cakes. Hamburgers and cake. <laughs> <laughs> and buns. Uh, sausage. Talking. Ooh, eye candy. Is it a full moon tonight? People are being weird. And uh, don't forget to make the Facebook event private this time. Can you imagine losing most of something without realizing it? Over time, kidney disease can destroy up to 80% of kidney function before you notice any symptoms. Talk to your family doctor to see if you're at risk and need to be screened. It could save your life. It's Naomi here. I'm here at Schnitzer Steel. We're here walking through the process of a kidney car once it's been donated. You wanted to know? You're about to find out. I'm here with Jack Shepard, a commercial director for Schnitzer Steel. We're here to talk about kidney car. Jack? We see a car just pulled in. Can you tell us a little bit about the process? Well, thanks, Naomi. Welcome to, uh, to Schnitzer Steel. We've had a uh, generous donor phone into uh, to our call center and has donated a, uh, a kidney car. We obviously dispatched the truck from Unito, as you can see, and they're uh, pulling the, uh, the vehicle into our scale as we speak. What's happening is the vehicle has pulled onto the scale. It'll be scaled in by our friendly scale staff, and it'll flow through our process into our yard be depolluted, drained uh, in an ecologically friendly fashion, and then go off to crushing and then to final processing. Jack, can you walk us through the process? Perfect, follow me. And I'm back with Jack to talk about the next steps. What's happening, Jack? Thanks, Naomi. We've uh, now accepted the vehicle safely into our facility. We're standing in front of the vehicle depollution center where all the fluids, battery, and everything will be drained in an environmentally friendly manner. And the vehicle will go to the end of life process. I brought you here today to show you the vehicle depollution station. You can see here with our state-of-the-art facility, we drain the gasoline, we drain the oils, we drain the antifreeze, and we drain all the windshield wiper fluid. We also remove the refrigerant from the vehicle, from the air conditioning system. This is all done in an environmentally friendly manner. All the materials are collected. Once this process has been completed, then the vehicle moves on to the next stage, which is crushing. The vehicle has now been crushed down to about a third of its size. 
It's uh, ready for the next stage of our process. It will be uh, loaded out and go to our mega shredder in uh, Tacoma, Washington. Well, we're back at the car pile. Jack, tell us what's happening. Thanks, Naomi. After the vehicle is safely depolluted and runs through the crusher as we just saw, it's put into the car pile. You can see in our car pile, we have many cars from the Kidney Foundation in it. Once these vehicles are crushed, they're sent off to Tacoma to our mega shredder to be shredded. And then that final product is put out into the market, comes back as washers and dryers, vehicles, rebar products, a myriad of project products that you use in your home and in society. So this isn't actually the end of life for these vehicles. No, Naomi, that's the beauty of recycling. It's not the end of life. It's actually recycled through the process and it comes back as a multitude of products back into society and it just keeps regenerating. That's the cycle of recycling. Very cool. Welcome to the Kidney Foundation Snitzer Steel Car Lot. So not only can we recycle your vehicles, but we can also, if they're in good working condition, we can try and sell them on your behalf. And when we do sell them, you get a tax receipt for the full value that it's sold for. If you're interested, you feel free to pop by the Schnitzer Yard and take a look. Naomi, after we went through the cars, now we're looking at other materials that we collect. At all of our Schnitzer locations, we collect tin items, washers, stoves, cans, etc. The Kidney Foundation is set up at each of our locations on account. The public can come in and donate that, get a tax receipt for the Kidney Foundation, and uh, donate to Recycle for Life. And you can donate any of your items at any of the Schnitzer locations in BC. Here they are on the screen. If you have an old car you don't want or don't use any longer, please consider donating it to the Kidney Car Program. If you're a corporation and you have a fleet of old vehicles you need to get rid of, give us a call. Thanks so much. This webinar is a very exciting one, Advancing PKD Care in Today's Society. Uh, Dr. Mike Bevilacqua is a nephrologist with additional training in health administration and divides his time between clinical medicine and nephrology administration. His clinical nephrology practice is based in Surrey, British Columbia, and he is involved in several administrative roles with BC Renal. He is the chair of the Kidney Care Committee, which oversees the care of over 15,000 British Columbians living with chronic kidney disease and he is also the medical lead for the BC Polycystic Kidney Disease Network, which aims to optimize management of PKD in British Columbia. It's a lot to take on, but he always finds time to join us um, and to help the PKD community. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Bevilacqua. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jeff. It's always hard to sit there and listen to someone read out your bio here. You're kind, but thank you for that. In BC, the way it's set up is we have this, this group called BC Renal. It used to be called BC Renal Agency. Now it's just BC Renal because that's trendier. But at any rate, we're the organization that is responsible for the coordination of all kidney care across the province. So that means things like uh, our chronic kidney disease clinics, uh, dialysis treatments, medications, all of the kidney care. The one group it doesn't include is transplant, which falls under BC transplant, um, but otherwise it, it coordinates the rest of the care. Now, and you can see it's a large number of, of people here. Uh, you know, we have many, many thousands in our kidney clinics, which is my other job. We have, you know, over 15, now actually up to 16,000 patients uh, uh, registered. Now, the way that care is delivered, though, is it's what we call coordinated centrally, but delivered locally. And what that means is us involved with BC Renal, what we do is we set kind of care pathways, 
we develop some of the infrastructures and some of the tools that clinics use, but the local clinics are the ones who are actually the ones delivering the day-to-day -day care. We have in British Columbia what we call health authorities. You can see here this one that says six health authorities. Um, those are the little areas that are geographical split up so that they can best deliver the care locally, which I think is a good model because then you understand the local needs. But the important thing is that we're not directly one body that um, is implementing or directly running the clinics. We kind of say we think you should do it in this way and then there's some flexibility to each clinic to kind of adapt that to their local needs. It, it seems like a kind of like I'm splitting hairs, but it is important to understand that when we're talking about having a provincial scope thing, it's not like it's one body of clinics that I can just dictate what's going to happen. We have to involve all of these various health authorities and make sure that, that these things work in all of those areas. We don't want to do something that just works in Vancouver or the lower mainland, but doesn't work uh, in the north, for example. It has to have that provincial scope and be modifiable so that every group can, can make something work. Um, and then to make it even more complex, what, what we say is that, so BC Renal that I just talked about does all uh, uh, kidney care. Well, that's all of our, you know, health authority run kidney care. Um, so this includes our chronic kidney disease clinics, our dialysis uh, programs and things like that. But we also have uh, nephrologists who kind of, we all work independently as well. So uh, all of us run our own individual offices. And that's, for example, where we would meet somebody the first time uh, and some of our patients might not go on to be into the kidney care clinic. Uh, so there's also a group of, of kidney care providers that work a little bit outside of BC Renal to add yet another layer of, of complexity. So this is our BC Renal website, it's just bcrenal.ca if you want to go poke around. Um, to orient yourself, if you're going up there, you'll see that there are um, uh, health info and health professionals. This is the health professionals tab, but the health info, which I'll show in a second, is the patient uh, uh, facing uh, patient specific things. We basically train people up to, to, to get there, to, to have the right tools and to have the right education. And you can see this, there's a lot of stuff there. It's not just that best practice document where I showed you here, but under each of these tabs, there's a whole bunch of stuff, right? Dietary things, blood pressure, what kind of medications to use, even as simple as forms that we use in the clinic when people come to see, there's one called a learning needs questionnaire. That was that point about when you come into the clinic, you tell me what you need and we'll make sure that we work around it. Um, there's a whole host of tools that we had to develop to support those best practices. Again, we don't just want to hand someone something and say, go do it. We want to put the tools in their hands so that they can. We went out of our way to uh, maximize uh, what people could do for imaging. So one of the cornerstones, again, I'll, I'll defer you to the previous talks about, about uh, how all these things work, but one of the main, main items, one of the most important things in polycystic disease care is imaging of the kidneys and using that to determine what's going on with the disease. And so one of the things that we heard is, well, a lot of this re relies on, on MRI, but we don't have access to that in, in our part of the province. So, you know, are there ways that people can, can do other items? And we talk about uh, a CT scan without getting too much into the details, the difference between an MRI and a CT scan is to do a CT scan, it's like an X-ray. So it has, a, it has a small amount of, of radiation that goes along with that, but it still has some, whereas an MRI doesn't. So that was always a worry of, well, you don't want to keep just CT scanning people over and over again. We don't want our patients to be glowing in the dark by the time they're done with them. You know, we want to, we want to limit the amount of, of radiation we're doing. So we actually came up in BC with what we call our, our ultra low dose protocol. So the UBC ultra low dose protocol for a kidney measurement with CT scan that actually get that radiation down to, it's about the same as getting an X-ray done. Or as before it would be, you know, 10 times that amount. Um, so we were able to really, really minimize this. And the goal, it might sound kind of academic, but the goal for that is to say, well, actually now if you're in a place in the province that doesn't have an MRI scanner, you can do this with a CT and not have to worry about giving a lot of radiation to the patient to do it. So again, enabling people to use what they have in their local area rather than having to travel eight hours to come get a, an MRI. And then in addition to uh, the tools we have for the clinicians, this we have a whole bunch of things for people living with the disease. And these are the ones I really want to encourage everybody to go and look on our website and pull them up. You know, we put a lot of work into these and I hope that they're useful to people. So if you go on that health uh, info uh, tab, um, oops, I was first one thing, if you want to 
I was looking at this like it's a button, but it's a PowerPoint slide. If you want to help info tab, if there's things like, you know, you can learn about the disease itself, actually when you go there, it puts you over to the PKD Foundation website, because that's where the best source of uh, information is. And then if you go into the managing, you'll see some of these things we develop, like how, what about dietary, I think, what should I be doing with my diet? Um, you know, there's a couple of other tools that come to in a second, uh, some items around treatment with, with, with the medication called that. Yeah. So information specifically for the patients, everything that we develop from, for the staff, we, our goal is to come up with a mirror image one for the patient to read themselves. And it's a two complement each other. And then we were fortunate enough to be working with the, the great group like we have here on the call with it was a PKD Foundation and the Kidney Foundation as well, where we actually collaborated to make some of these resources together. Um, and the ones we took on were things like pain, chronic pain management or pain management of polycystic disease, uh, family planning and pregnancy, and screening or testing of asymptomatic family members. And, and the reasons we took these on was um, there wasn't a lot of great information actually out there. One of the reasons, especially for something like chronic pain, I'll, I'll be blunt about it. One of the reasons that there wasn't a lot of great information about there is because it's a hard subject. It's a very hard topic to come up with, with recommendations for. But our, our kind of goal, and I'm so glad to have the, the, the PKD Foundation and the Kidney Foundation too who agreed with this, was to say, well, just because it's hard doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. And we just kind of jumped into it headlong and took it on and came up with some resources. So I'm super happy. And these are up on the website now that, that everybody can, can take a look at. Thanks to all the car donations made to the Kidney Car Program, the Kidney Foundation of Canada can help all these people with kidney disease. Those donations are instrumental in providing them with care and invaluable support. When you give your car to the Kidney Car Program, it will be towed for free and recycled or resold. You'll also receive a tax receipt of at least $300. To continue to improve the quality of life of thousands of patients, we need your car today. Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Andrews, and I'm here to introduce to you a new community initiative by the Kidney Brand. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> uh, who's there? <laughs> My husband tried to come in. I am the founder of our family business, Andrews Real Estate. Andrews Real Estate. <laughs> when you express your support for the BC Yukon. <laughs> You're stuck at that part again. That's that kidney foundation. Okay. Express at the ex turn it express location near you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm committed to this. How about you? Will you help us? 